Hi, I'm Mary Poplin with Boris FX, and today I'm going to show you how to use S-Glint and S-Glow to really brighten up these buildings, but we're going to isolate those effects using Mocha masks inside of Sapphire. The new Sapphire tools include Mocha in most of the Sapphire effects. This allows you to use Mocha's powerful planar tracker to create advanced masks and rotoscoping effects right inside of your Sapphire tools. This is going to be a really basic overview wherein we add a glint to our windows and our lights here on our buildings and a glow to the moon. We're going to use mocha masks to isolate our various areas. To get started, we're going to locate our sapphire effect, in this case inside our sapphire lighting kit, and select S Glint. I can design my effect inside of S Glint using the HUD controls. From here, I can isolate this to the buildings instead of the entire shot. So I will navigate to my effects panel and hit Edit in Mocha inside my S Glint effect. And this will actually launch Mocha right off our timeline. So because it's a plugin inside of the Sapphire plugins, it allows us to actually read and write to the timeline. So I'm going to take my X spline. This is how we create splines inside of Mocha. I'm going to quickly go over some very basic tools. We have the picker tool, we have the edge point tool, and the point insertion tool. We have our pan tool, our zoom tool, and this is create X-spline. You can make beziers if you want, but X-splines are the best ones to use inside of Mocha, and here's why. They're a lot easier to draw. Let's go ahead and take our X-spline, and let's draw some really loose shapes around our building. I don't have to go crazy detailed with my shape. I just need to make sure that I'm isolating my buildings more or less. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave my minimum percent of pixels at 20%. If I had a smaller shape, Mocha would automatically make that number higher for me. Usually the default is what you want. Don't bother changing your input channel. Don't worry about changing this uh, large motion, small motion, or manual track. We'll talk about that later. And we'll go into more detail about angle and zoom as well in another tutorial that's more advanced. Right now, all you need to know is that Mocha tracks translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. That is to say, it tracks translation, it tracks scale, it tracks rotation. But what's shear and perspective? Shear is just a shift in X and Y, and perspective is the addition of Z space. If neither one of these is occurring in your shot, you can go ahead and turn them off and then track forward. Tracking has been sped up so that you don't have to sit through watching the track. Once my track is complete, I can adjust my shape. And in this case, I'm going to use my point insertion tool to alter this edge. Mocha now tweens between the two corrections I made based on the track and I end up using only two frames of correction. If the thumbnails ever get in your way, you can turn them off right here. And now we're going to hit save and we're going to hit close. And now Mocha has applied our effects to our masked area instead of the whole shot. I can blur my Mocha mat using Blur Mocha and see the feathered edge in this view. If I check the Show Mocha Only checkbox, I can see my Mocha mask as a black and white mat. Now I need to make this moon glow. I will select S Glow out of the Sapphire Lighting options and apply that to my footage. Inside of S Glow, I need to design my glow using the heads up display. But obviously I don't want to make the whole shot glow, I only want to apply the glow to the moon. So I'll go into my effects panel and I hit the edit in Mocha button. And this will actually read our footage off our timeline again. I'm going to select my X spline and draw a nice round shape around my moon. I don't actually have to use a track on this moon because it's such a simple animation that two points should do it, but I'm going to click and drag around all of my points and I'm going to relax for a curve. So you pull tight for corners and you relax for a curve with X-blinds. Let me just show you an example of a square. So if I needed this to be square, I would pull tight for corners or I would relax for a curve. Let's turn our mask on so we can see what that's doing. That's the power of X-blinds, that's why I like to use X-blinds. 
We still have beziers right here if you're really comfortable with them, but I have to worry about handlebars and it's just not a single point of control. If I try to control all of these at the same time, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now I'm going to take my X spline, select all of my points, I'm going to move all the way down over here, and I can actually just use my transform tool to move my shape, and it's going to follow the moon now. The transform tool will work on my entire shape or just parts of my shape, depending. And again, if these thumbnails bother you, you can turn them off right here. But they're really great for Roto when you need to do fine detail. We're going to save and we're going to close this. And even though we didn't do any tracking at all, we now have our glow applied to our moon. And again, to feather the mat, we can go into the blur mocha slider and add a blur to our mocha mat to make sure there's no hard lines. Be sure to watch our intermediate and more advanced tutorials in order to learn more about the nitty gritty of how Mocha works. This is just meant to have you hit the ground running. So it's just that easy to get started in Mocha. If you have any questions, I am Mary Poplin with Boris Effects. Find out more on www.borisfx.com.